Okay, so our next talk uh, will be by Amélie, and uh, she's going to talk about uh, a translation from K to DWP. Exactly, so thank you. Um, maybe I can do that. Okay, so in fact, I will present a part of my thesis, and the main goal is um, a low interoperability of semantics. And to do that, we are interested in to deducti. And I mean, you use it, so it's a, a logical framework um, that you can encode various logic with it. And in especially, you can do interoperability of proofs. And we need also a domain-specific language to define semantics, so K here. Uh, and K is a semantical framework. And you can define semantics like C, Java, JavaScript, and so on. And the particularity is you can execute the semantics thanks to K. And you can also prove some properties um, on, a on a program thanks to the K program. And here we are interested in the, in the translation of the semantics written in K into deducti while keeping the possibility of executing the semantics. And to be uh, more precise, so I just say, so K is a semantical framework, so you can define formal semantics of programming languages, and you can also, uh, K automatically, in fact, generates tools from this semantics, whereas deducti uh, is a logical to encode various logic to allow interoperability of proofs between different formal tools, and both of these tools are based on the logic. So the first one, so K, is based on a matching logic, so it's a, an untyped first order logic with fixed points on next, an next operator, where on it's a classical logic, whereas uh, deducti is based on a lambda pi calculus modulo theory, and it's a lambda calculus with dependent types and uh, extended with uh, rewriting rules. But okay, these two tools seem to be very different, but they, are, they have a common feature, the rewriting. And more precisely, in fact, the difference is um, in K you can have some conditional rewriting rules, and you can also do a rewriting modulo ACUI, but it's not possible in deducti if you want to do uh, interoperability. Okay, and um, for now, I mean for the next of the talk, I will briefly explain how we define a K semantics, then how uh, it's possible to translate it into a specific machine logic theory named here core, and then how I translate it into deductive. Okay, um, so first of all, I will define semantics in K. So there is, in fact, two steps. The first one is define the syntax, thanks to uh, a BNF grammar, and uh, then uh, we need to define the semantics thanks to two ingredients, so on this uh, grammar, of course, and um, the first ingredient is configuration, so it's in fact just a state of the, of the program. Um, and here you have an example, so uh, with two cells, so the first one is named K, um, and it contains in fact the current program, and the second is um, the environment, and you just say that the variable X has a value 20, 25, and you can all, uh, define also rewriting rules on these configurations. So in fact, you define um, a transition systems. So this is a, a next, uh, an example or an extract of uh, transition uh, transitional systems. On here, there is a node. Um, in one node, there is one configuration. And thanks to rewriting rules, in fact, you define the relation between these nodes. So for the first, uh, at the bottom here, yeah, here, I, um, to execute, uh, or I mean to do the semantics of the affectation, in fact there is a rule that uh, updates the environment. Then um, <coughs> the second rule that you can apply is um, to just unroll one times the while loop, <coughs> as here, thanks to uh, if then else uh, constructor. And um, after all, you can in fact evaluate the, the, the condition and so on. And here you can update uh, the environment and do uh, it uh, maybe one time ago and to just finish the pr to execute the program. And of course, there can be uh, I, there, here there is a, another tools uh, another node sorry and there is uh, another uh, value of x that you can reach the same uh, final uh, node. Okay. 
And now how I translate the case semantics into deductive. So basically, <laughs> uh, I core is a very, very huge and verbose. I mean, it's a logic, so <laughs> and just to be clear, so a semantics which has only 16 uh, lines in K generate a very, very big file. So I briefly present uh, the, this translation. So as I say, there is BNF configuration and rewriting rules into K. And in call, you have sort symbols and some axioms. Uh, so the BNF, in fact, generates some symbols and, of course, some sort to type the, the symbols. Uh, if you would like to translate sort into deductive, you just uh, have a, a sort K, so the sort of all sort in K, which has a type type, so the type of all of type in deductive. And all uh, the other sort uh, as the type sort K. And for symbols, it's not so difficult to translate this. Just clarification. Uh, uh, for configuration, it's in fact the same thing. Configuration generates all the symbols on some sort. And for rewriting rules, uh, they generate axioms. And more particularly, uh, some of them uh, don't have a condition, so it's, I think I just reverse the process to translate it into deductive, to obtain uh, the initial rewriting rules, in fact. But when there is a, a condition, uh, there is two cases. The first one is um, when the rule, in fact, is about evaluation strategy. So I will briefly explain this black box that elimin eliminated, in fact, the, um, uh, a part of the pattern. And with condition, uh, on the other case, I encode, in fact, the condition into the left and right of, uh, of the rules. So I briefly explain these two, uh, two parts. OK, so for translate evaluation strategy, in fact, uh, it's, it's important to understand two things. The first one is evaluation is the ordering thanks to a list. So this is an example where the first element is not evaluated. And I know that because the type of the first element is, is a BXP or EXP, as you prefer, but it's not the type bool. So it's, you, you know when uh, an expression is evaluated thanks to its types. So more concretely, or I mean, <laughs> the, kid, uh, the K <coughs> framework generates these two rules, in fact. So it's exactly uh, what I'm saying. So the first one just here. Uh, so it's a, a lazy end, so we need to uh, <coughs> first evaluate this first argument because it's not uh, an evaluated expression. So I, I put this argument at the beginning of uh, the list. And here it's a reverse uh, process because the first uh, element of the list is an evaluated uh, expression because its type is bool. And for tr to translate it into deductive, uh, in fact, I just precise uh, uh, more specifically the, the, um, the pattern of the first argument. So here with not end, according to this uh, grammar. And for the second rule, I just add uh, an injection to precise uh, the type bool, in fact. Okay. And for conditional rewriting rules, uh, so this is an example of that you can write in K. Uh, and the key idea is you generate a fresh symbol here, flat, flat max, and you add um, the, here the two conditions. And then you generate uh, two rules to do the specific, for, to specify when one of these two uh, conditions is evaluated to true. Okay, and I will maybe skip this, but it, it's very close. It's just another way to write the same thing in 2K because you have a, a lot of attributes, so option, and you can do uh, very uh, close things in the encoding, I mean. Okay, so it's time to conclude. So, uh, so as I say, it's a part of my thesis, and the first objective is to translate a case semantics into deductive to, edu to execute it. So it's useful to test the semantics into deductive, and in particular, it's possible to execute a program now in deductive. Uh, the second objective is translate a case semantics into deductive to, to check proofs. 
And to do that, I need an encoding of machine logic into Deducti. So see my talk at, at uh, Deducti School to know more detail about that. And this is uh, interesting to, in fact, recheck Kepura proof. So again, uh, just be patient. I will explain that uh, <laughs> tomorrow morning. <laughs> or also, uh, and another interesting thing is you can also, if you can translate a case semantics on, pro on check proof, of course, you can also prove property about a language describing K. And the last objective is um, export K semantics into Cork, Agda, thanks to Deducti. And uh, if it's possible, uh, maybe you can do, uh, in fact, uh, fine, you can allow from multiformalist and semantics. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, questions? Um, so very naive uh, question. Um, so uh, what do you think are the um, the advantages of uh, having this translation? Mm, the main one is maybe, um, and it's not clearly right on this slide. In fact, um, is um, you can define the semantics of a language as you want. You can also write programs um, and. You can do this uh, if as work. I mean, very easily, and, um, and, it, and then uh, check some proofs into thanks to Cork or Lean. That depends uh, which tool you prefer or something like that. And uh, it's more general, in fact. I mean, if you would like to prove a, a proof uh, with, in, I don't know, uh, with some some tools la like uh, wise free you need to maybe um, write again your program into y free or something like that to after all the profit but yeah it's not the case I, I mean you need to define the semantics but if you would like to prove something and you don't know the semantics of the the language is maybe uh, <laughs> not good <laughs> so yeah uh, any other question uh, yeah, thank you. So this translation you showed, it, it gets pretty big, right? That's what you, what you said. Yes. Is you there any maybe hope of, of optimizing that? Because I think if you want to now reason about that, let's say, in, in any proof system, it probably mm. will be very hard to, to write any proofs about it, won't it, with this size? Or is there some kind of support that you can hope for? Um, uh, in fact, there is two points. So the main problem with this uh, part is there is no paper about that. So uh, <laughs> I take too much time to write this line <laughs> and s try to, some to understand something. <laughs> and in fact, it generates a, so a big file, but um, I mean it's normal because you have s um, some axiom to say, oh, this is a function. Uh, uh, to specify the, this sort is a subtype of this one. So, um, yeah. Okay, I see. Thanks. But the translation is n takes few seconds. I mean, and the deductive file is not so long compared to the core file. Yeah. I just want to understand from where to where are we now translating? So assume I have now an ACTA proof. Mm -hmm. What can I do with this framework? Um, then you need to have a semantics written in K uh, of ACTA. Mm -hmm. um, then you can uh, translate all those proof into deducti. Mm -hmm. So on the semantics too, of course, and then you can also tr translate these two things into maybe cock, maybe if you prefer cock. I I mean it's very corrected to, to this one to the last objective. Maybe I I don't explain it. 
imagine you have a, I don't know, uh, a small language defined in Coq, for instance, um, imperative language, an extension of this language, uh, so just an, one feature, so maybe um, subtyping, I don't know, in Isabelle, and maybe if you can translate these two things into, so thanks to uh, deduct, fin, K, deduct, and so on, you can uh, translate all these things maybe in Agda because you prefer Agda, for instance. But you don't would like to, yeah, do again the, the formalization or some proof and so on. Yeah, I don't understand. So I understand somehow you somehow get from Agda into Didacti. But how get, do you get from Didacti to Coq? Um, or, or is it the other way around? In fact, there is some works on uh, that translates um, some proof from Deducti to Agda and Matita and so on. An example is a little Fermat theorem that I think at the beginning is written in uh, Mat Matita. Mm. And thanks to Deducti, it's possible to translate it into, okay, Matita, but also Coq, Isabel, Ashwell, and PVAs, I think. So, so the di so the translation goes both ways. So it can go from acta to didacti and from didacti to yes, any exactly yeah. in this okay. way. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Ah. Yeah. So you were saying that you can actually use didacti to go from one proof assistant to another one, mm -hmm. but. Um, so that's really great for proofs because we don't have to redo a proof again. That would be not another framework. But uh, if we are working in something that relies on, on computation, is this going to mess with this? Mm, yes, also. Uh, I'm in fact, you can uh, keep uh, computi computational uh, com um, thing thanks to rewriting rules. So. After all, the, <laughs> the difficulty is translate rewriting rules into, for instance, pattern matching or some stuff like that. That depends on the proof assistance, of course. But uh, I mean, it's, it could be easiest to translate rewriting rules into Agda because you already have a kind of rewriting rules. But, uh. Thank you. I think this, that's it for questions. Let's thank Emily again.